hey guys good morning and thanks for joining so in the last class we have started endpoint protection or endpoint security so already we have seen what is the licensing option for the endpoint protection and also we discussed about what is the deployment or design or architecture so basically what is endpoint protection or endpoint security what are security controls if you are implementing to the endpoint like laptop or macbook or workstation or desktop those things we will call it as endpoints those security solutions will call it as endpoint security solutions so what are the different types of solutions we will implement for endpoint security point of view antivirus cdr okay dlp hds hps file integrity monitoring and encryption okay so what is the licensing option for these endpoint all the endpoint not only just antivirus or edr for all the endpoint security solutions as well as endpoint protection related solutions the licensing option is same as it is based on the how many number of endpoints are there for those endpoints based on the operating system version wise we have to purchase okay so after purchasing what vendor will do vendor will send those licensing keys to us okay then those keys we have to install when i say key this is basically software file that software file we have to install in each and every end user machine okay so designer implementation approach we will call it as a client and server based approach each and every client machine we have to install antivirus or edr software that is also called as agent so and also we have to open the port as of now i given 443 but vendor to vendor this port number will vary maybe cloud strike will use one of the port number or maybe ten micro will use one of the port number or meka fail is one of the port number and so on at the time of installing the this antivirus agent we have to open the port as well so this port will communicate to the antivirus cdr server example you know all these endpoint related protection of the solutions most of the malware category of the attacks antivirus sorry virus worm trojan ransomware adware spyware keyloggers logic bomb all those will fall under the malware category of the attacks you know already so these endpoint security solutions also most of the cases 98% of the cases it will prevent malware category of the attacks only okay so example end user maybe he will drive by downloads or end user maybe he will copy something to remove old devices maybe end user will click on the phishing email attachments and so on in that scenario so whenever this malware type of the category of the attacks will come this agent will communicate to the antivirus and the edr server based on the policies configured so here we will configure the policies by default vendor will create the policies if you want we can do the customization also so default rules already vendor will provide if you want to make a customization according to our business when i say customization according to our requirement according to our business business perspective so we have to make a customization rules as well okay so policies and rules we have to configure or we have to enable those policies and rules and once we are enabling those policies and rules whenever any abnormal or malicious or suspicious activity of the malware category of the attacks will happen these endpoints this agent will communicate to the antivirus edr server and automatically in the antivirus edr antivirus edr tool or server alerts will be generated for getting the alert notification also back end some of the detection methods will be there those detection methods also we will discuss okay what are the different type policies will configure okay policies so before going to policies i want to give one logical question now okay example maybe yesterday we have seen one of the requirement is related to sbi yes pay they have more than 10 lakh endpoints are there including servers combination of both windows as well as linux or unix operating systems if you want to implement antivirus and edr for all these endpoints maybe sbi bank has given only 10 weeks time sorry 10 days not 10 weeks 10 days implementing the antivirus or edr tools in the sbi bank all over the worldwide including india okay so we have to employ 
the, all these antivirus EDR solution. Okay, for one machine itself, installing the antivirus or EDR agent, it will take minimum maybe one minute. In that scenario, because these SBA branches are there, as I said, all over the worldwide. That means whether whoever got the project, maybe TCS has got the project. TCS got the project related to antivirus or EDR implementation. So that means whether TCS team, they will go to the each and every location, wherever SBA bank is located, and they will deploy these uh, antivirus agents. And also they gain only 10 days time period to complete entire project. Okay. To complete for 10,000 machines, if you want to install each and every day, if you're installing 1,000 or 2,000 also, 10 days we can implement only 1 lakh. What about remaining 9 lakh? 9 lakh machines, how we can install antivirus EDR agent? Okay. So in that scenario, what we have to do? So we have to configure the CMDB. Okay. So CMDB configuration management database. Otherwise, we have one more option, the SCCM, Server Center Configuration Manager. Okay, Server Center Configuration Manager. When I went to DXC Technologies as a security architect role, so that time they asked this question. So one of the client or customer is there and they want to complete the project in one or two days. And the customer has only 10,000, sorry, customer has 1 lakh uh, endpoints are there. In that scenario, how can you implement antivirus or ADR? Or how can you implement endpoint security solutions? So what is the answer here we have to say? So you have to say SCCM, Server Center Configuration Manager. Okay, I will write that one also. If the organization our customer has more number of endpoints greater than 1000, we have to use concept called SCCM. So SCCM meaning here server center configuration manager. So what is this SCCM will do? So first in the SCCM server, we have to configure all the endpoints along with IP address and also host name. So from antivirus or EDR tool, we have to push those softwares files to the respective endpoints. Okay, I'm repeating once again. In the SCCM server, SCCM server, see the servers, this server is different and antivirus tool is different. Both are not same. So in the SCCS server, we have to define example, this one, it belongs to laptop and the location is Bangalore and 10.10.10.2. 10 10 so this is MacBook, example, Chennai. 10.10.10.3, 10 10 this is belongs to workstation, example, Pune. So in such a way, we have to configure all those 10 lakhs machine, even location wise also we can push. So our licensing, they will give, right? That licensing file, we have to push this from SSCM server to all the endpoints at a time. And we have to go and we have to install. A couple of times what will happen, that connectivity related issues, it will come. Then we have to troubleshoot. What the final conclusion from this one? If you want to deploy antivirus or ADR related solutions to more than 1000 endpoints or more than more than 100 endpoints, we have to use a concept called SCCM, Server Center Configuration Manager. In Server Center Configuration Manager, we have to configure all the IP addresses along with our host names. Every computer has host name and also location wise also, our wish maybe location wise also we can configure. Okay, so this is called grouping basically. This concept is also called as a grouping. From this SCCM server, uh, we have to make a scheduled task or a scheduled cross jobs. Then we have to push those uh, software files to the respective endpoints and it will fix all those uh, softwares in the respective endpoints. This is the way how we have to install the 
if the distributed deployment and also if the machine, if the company has or organization has a more than 100 endpoints okay so that is the deployment for the okay so i can put here distributed deployment or when you say distributed deployment multiple locations or more number of endpoints so that is about uh, distributed deployment but next one is the policies what are the different policies we have to configure so couple of times policies also can call it as a rules okay so first rule is we have to configure threat prevention so next we have to configure hads haps next we have to configure dlp next we have to configure update management next we have to configure account lockout policy next we have to configure file integrity monitoring next one we have to configure antivirus okay next one we have to configure app control next one we have to configure web control so these are all the policies we have to configure in the edr tool or antivirus tool okay nowadays edr tool has inbuilt capabilities of okay so hds haps dlp file integrity monitoring except encryption if you are purchasing edr tool okay you have all these four options file integrity monitor up to file integrity monitoring so before as i said edr concept came only 2019 or 18 only prior to that one every solution is different antivirus antivirus solution is different dlp solution is different hds hap solution is different okay every solution is different so but now edr solution has all these inbuilt capabilities so inbuilt capabilities but antivirus solution doesn't have but edr solution has all these inbuilt capabilities as i am repeating once again you are purchasing edr solution so we have all these capabilities nothing but dlp features will be there and hds hps capabilities file integrity monitoring except encryption remaining all the four features are available okay so couple of times they are asking the entire what is the difference between antivirus and edr so we have to say edr has the more features more technical features as compared to antivirus example so it has the inbuilt features of dlp hds hps file integrity monitoring and also one more difference we have to say antivirus traditional antivirus is working on signature based detection mechanism but edr concept is working on machine learning and artificial intelligence as well so these are all the two main differences between antivirus and edr okay these are all the two main differences that's why everyone is moving to edr tool okay i will give, i will explain the edr full in depth analysis so these are all the policies we have to configure threat prevention so threat prevention meaning here it has the all the malware category of the attacks whenever it will occur it will prevent it all malware category and also ransomware category if all malware category and ransomware category of the attacks will occur threat prevention cap policy it can detect it as well as it can block it so here two options will be there when you want to enable this policy so whether you want to block or allow obviously we can block or monitor also option is available block or allow or monitor okay so that is first policy next one hds haps so as i said edr tool has a inbuilt capabilities of host intrusion detection system host intrusion prevention system as well okay whenever any abnormal or malicious or suspicious activity is happening on all these endpoints based on the behavioral pattern and based on the signatures it will detect as well as it will block it okay so here abnormal malicious suspicious activity either it will alert or block dlp so 
DLP full form is a data loss or a data leak prevention. So as I said, uh, even previously we discussed about DLP. So classification of the data in the ordination level, it is not so easy because so data can be maintained by multiple people. So application development team, they will maintain their own data. Data science team, they will maintain their own data. Product development team, they will maintain their own data. HR team, they will maintain their own data. Security team doesn't aware of what is critical data and what is non-critical data. Why? Because so multiple teams, different stakeholders will be there for every organization. So whether HR team, what is a critical data and what is non-critical data, how we are aware of. And what is the legal team? Okay, critical data, non-critical data, we are aware of. And also what is the product development team? Critical data, non-critical data, we are aware of. So we have to coordinate with each and every team. Based on the confidentiality and based on the sensitivity, we have to classify the data. So there are different types of classification also we will do. One is a public, private, internal, or external. So these are all the different types of classification of the data we will do. And also, as I said previously, PIA data and also PHA data. Personal identifiable information. Nowadays, it's one of the trending technologies in the market, especially for GDPR compliances, this PIA will fall under. PHA, personal health information. Okay, so DLP things, how we can configure in the ADR tool based on country-wise PIA data. Australia PIA data, India PIA data, USA PIA data, UK PIA data. According to that one, we can define the these DLP policies. Okay, I will show you practically, don't worry. All these things, what are we are discussing just now, Everything I will show you practically. Update management. Update management meaning here antivirus updates. So antivirus updates we have to do regularly, not weekly ones or monthly ones. It's a daily basis. It's better to have daily basis. Why? Because so a lot of hacking is happening all over the world wide. So a lot of malware will enter into the automation level new attacks are coming okay so new malwares are coming so it's better to update so daily basis our antivirus signatures okay every tool or every vendor okay so they will do r d research and development they will identify what are the new attacks are coming and they will see what is the hash value what is the file name what is the file category what is the file size all those things they will update the database if you want to get those databases in our tool water we purchased so we have to do the update as well so we have to log into antivirus or edr tool and we have to click on update management so there is no need to do any manual update there are two different types of update management one is a manual update one is automated update so for manual update human intervention or human being is required nothing but antivirus analyst for automated update, no person is required. Directly can schedule at midnight, 12 o'clock daily basis. So once that midnight at 12 o'clock, so time is reaching. So automatically this antivirus tool will update their own database. In such a way, signatures will be updated regularly. Okay. This is applicable to even virustotal.com also. Okay. So that is about how to do the updating of the management of the antivirus of the signatures daily basis. So there is no need to do manual. So everything is automated one. Next one is account lockout. So even account lockout also we can do, or it has a feature of our ADR tool. Meaning here, if someone is trying to do three attempts or four attempts of the brute force category of the attacks, so account lockout is possible automatically and we can unlock that particular account so that account lock option is available in the edr tools next one is file integrity monitoring update or delete or modify okay or adding the file behavior example maybe you are part of sock team and you are trying to okay so access one of the dev apps file in the similar way you are part of sock team you are planning to access one of the machine learning related repo. Or a part of SOC team, you are trying to access one of the product development related Azure DevOps repo. In that scenario, 
something you are trying to access even they were unauthorized person so you are trying to modify something okay so in in that particular scenario what will happen this edr tool will suspect you are doing some of the abnormal activity you don't have the permission but you are trying to access those files then file integrity monitoring of tool will generate the alert notification okay so every file has the unique hash value a digital representation of the file is called as a integrity or hash value okay so that one we can configure using this file integrity monitoring so mainly this one is useful for the whenever the malware category of the attacks are installed and it is trying to exploit installing is nothing but adding of the file in the respective attacker sorry end user machine okay next one is app control web control both are same only almost so app control web control nothing but yeah app control or web control is nothing but so blocking of the domains or websites okay application control basically blocking of the domains which domains we have to block which domains we have to allow web control also same which websites we have to block which websites we have to allow okay so here also not only this app control and web control option is available in the adr tool this option is available in the dns server dns server also we can go and we can see which domains we have to block and which domains we have to allow we discussed as a part of dns catchy poisoning attack okay so this option is available in the proxy as well this option is available even in the firewall also okay so example couple of organizations they will block uh, social networking websites when i say social networking websites linkedin facebook twitter youtube gmail yahoo mail all these will fall under social networking websites they will block all those websites couple of companies they will block even terrorist related so couple of companies they will block news related okay so adult content related and also uh, gambling related games related so all these the different different types of websites or applications normally every organizations will follow okay so those things where we are doing where we are blocking we are blocking either in the adr tool either we are blocking in the proxy or either we are blocking in the firewall level okay so these are all the different types of policies we have to configure but as i said traditional antivirus doesn't support all these traditional antivirus will support only first option that's all but what about remaining option remaining feature doesn't have the traditional antivirus tool hope you are getting now what is the difference between antivirus and edr tool and edr tool has more capabilities as compared to so traditional antivirus traditional antivirus will block only malware category of the attacks okay so even this edr tool powershell scripts python scripts java html javascript pal so these are all the different types of okay so malicious scripts also whenever attacker is trying to install in the application level or os level it can block it automatically so that is the capability even edr tool has that is called heuristic approach heuristic approach is nothing but malicious scripts attacker is trying to install in the targeted machine in the os level so these are all the policies we have to configure next one is a detection methods so how okay we are configuring we are configuring the policies that doesn't mean that directly antivirus tool will go and will block the so whatever abnormal or malicious activities going on so we configured all these policies but back end some mechanism should be there right so whenever this type of example maybe one micro or petty or ransomware attack is coming in that in the how okay so this tool will understand okay you configured policy that's okay fine but how tool will understand whether really this one attack or petty ransomware attack or whether it means maze ransomware attack or whether it is regular ransomware attack tool will not understand right so for that one back and some of the detection methods will be there those detection methods are in the class several times i told you so i'll explain it at the time of antivirus cdr tool 
Okay, so those detection methods are one is signature, second one is machine learning or artificial intelligence, third one is heuristic approach, fourth one is baseline, fifth one is hash value method, last one is sandboxing. So these are all the different types of mechanisms will be used by not only our ADR tools, each and every tool will work on the same concept. Every tool has a capability of these two. Example in future, we'll discuss about firewall. Firewall has the capability of signature as well as machine learning. And also in future, we'll discuss about network IDS and network IPS. So, Network IDS and network IPS also has the capability of signature based as well as machine learning. Once again, we'll discuss our web application firewall. Web application firewall also has a capability of signature based detection mechanism, machine learning mechanism. Okay, now we'll go and we'll discuss about all these one by one. What is mean by signature first? So this already I given previously. So signature based meaning here already it's a known attack and one of the ID number will be there for each and every attack. So as I said, practical way. So approximate two and a half years or maybe three years back. So we have Corona. So that time we don't have any solution or we don't have any medication. So how to fix the Corona problem. But after one and a half year or one year, R and team of the medical or healthcare industries or pharma companies. They have done some of the med sorry, they have done the R&D and they found out the solution. Okay, well, maybe vaccinations or pills or tablets and so on. So that is called two, three years back, it, there is no signature for Corona. And after one and a half year back, so we got Corona vaccination as well as what is the medication we have to do or the, what are the pills we have to use. Okay, so that is called signature. So known thing, something is there that is called signature. Unknown thing is there that is not called as a signature. Okay. So what in this scenario, our corporate, our IT, or maybe software industry related, whenever we are say signature, signature is nothing but here. Already every attack has some of the signature or program. That program will be maintained by vendor in the vendor database. Whenever similar type of attack is occurring to us, it will match that particular pattern or maybe algorithm or maybe signature. It will block it automatically. Okay. So that's called signature. If I want to explain in the one more scenario way in the day to day, maybe take example class attendance. One is belongs to Suresh, two is belongs to Mahesh, three is belongs to Ganesh, four is belongs to Nagesh. In such a way, maybe 16 members people are there in the class. So if I call one number, only Suresh will respond. If I will call two number, then Mahesh will be respond. If I will call roll number three, Ganesh will be respond. If I will call four number, Nagesh will be respond. So for every person has their own pattern, their own number, their own unique ID. In this similar way, vendor also will maintain the vendor database for each and every attack. Whenever these abnormal or malicious or suspicious activities happening, okay, it will match the pattern, whether in the vendor database, this pattern is available, whether this signature ID is available, whether signature is available. If signature is available, automatically it will block it. That is called signature based. Okay. So how we can define this one? Vendor will maintain for all the known attacks signature in the vendor database. Whenever similar type of known attacks are coming to organization, tool will verify in the vendor database 
Vendor database means tool guys. Don't confuse here. Vendor database. And it will see whether it is matching to the signature ID or not. If it will match automatically, it will block it. So that is called signature based. So this is applicable to known attacks. This is applicable to known attacks. Then what about unknown attacks? Unknown attacks also nowadays, as I said, only 30% are okay, signature based. Remaining 70% uh, are unknown attacks. So we don't have solution up to 2017 or 2016 for these type of, that time we are following baseline method. Okay. But so once the machine learning and artificial intelligence came into picture, Every tool we are using machine learning and artificial intelligence also. How this artificial intelligence and machine learning is helpful for our security tools? Okay, so it has the behavior or habits or actions of the end user, server, application, database. So example, if I want to explain the practical day-to-day -day life, so I will put here machine learning or artificial intelligence. So today Facebook is asking by one of the person. It will so it will throw alert. It's one of the application now. So today one of the end user or employee is trying to access Facebook. It will show alert. So tomorrow also is asking Facebook. It will show alert. So day after tomorrow also is asking Facebook. It will show alert. In such a way, so daily basis, our ADR tools, our firewalls, our SIM tools, even SIM tools also this capability. That is called UBA, User Entity Behavior Analytics. That is nothing but machine learning capability. So now our ADR tool, what it will do? So it will go and it will see why this guy is asking daily basis this Facebook.com. It will do the historical analysis, okay, historical approach, and also what is the action what the behavior of the end user on the daily basis. So in such a way, it will do two months validation and habits and actions. Okay, this is genuine activity. So that's why user is trying to access daily basis. In such a way, our idea tool or machine will be understand. Okay, this is a legitimate capability, not illegitimate capability. So that's why, so this machine learning capability is very helpful for the unknown category of the attacks. Unknown category meaning here, maybe today one of the new attack is coming. Today example, new malware, maybe new ransomware, maybe new virus or new worm is coming. Okay, attacker is developed that new virus or worm and he sent it to every organization. So it will reach to the EDR tool. Now EDR tool will see, so whether this is a known action or unknown action. So it is a new thing to the ADR tool, automatic alert will be generated. Once alert will be generated, then we will go and we'll do the investigation analysis. Whether it is a known malware, unknown malware. If it is unknown malware, we will take the hash value and we'll block the hash value. So those scenarios, this machine learning and artificial intelligence are really helpful for us. Unknown category of the attacks will come. So machine can be understand historical analysis of the whatever user is doing, application is doing, server is doing, according to the actions, habits, and also behavior, it can identify whether it is known capability or unknown capability. Okay. So that's why this machine learning is very, very important. EDR tool has capability of ML and AA, whenever any unknown category of the attack will come to our endpoints, 
EDR tool will go and verify the behavior, existing behavior, historical analysis. When you say historical analysis, past one month, what user has done? That is called historical analysis. Okay. Past one month or two months, what is the user actions and activity? So that's why it will do it. Historical analysis. Actions. And also, what applications, servers, databases, or peer devices accessed by end user. So it will verify all these. It will verify, okay, so existing behavior of the end user, historical, historical analysis of the end users, or the actions of the end user, habits also we can keep. Actions comma habits and also what are the applications he accessed what are the servers he accessed what are the database he accessed what are the peer devices accessed and so on whenever any new thing he is trying to access alert will be generated okay even though it is legitimate okay so then it will throw an error so that is like a false positive okay ML and AA feature can be used to identify unknown attacks. So that is about second one. Next one, heuristic approach. Heuristic approach meaning here detection method. This is also a detection method. So in the heuristic approach, most of the cases script control example powershell or python or html or javascript or pal or php or golang so there are different scripting programming languages we have and also programming and development languages we have whenever an attacker is trying to create a malware and he is sending to our endpoints in that scenario so this heuristic approach method can identify whether this script control is executed and is there any command and control is going to the attacker machine. So it will validate and automatically it will block it. If that files are maybe if that execution of the scripts as well as programming or development related malicious activities is happening, heuristic approach will help us to identify what is the illegitimate activity. Okay. This method is used to identify malicious scripts or programs or script control execution. in the endpoints whenever these powershell based powershell pal python html javascript php and so on malicious scripts will run on the endpoints edr tool will identify and it will generate the notification so some of the illegal activities going on so that is called heuristic approach so next one we have baseline method baseline method most of the cases this is already we have seen so peak of the traffic traffic based basically peaks of the traffic when you say peaks of the traffic so nine to six hours nine to six our office timings 
and here as i said earlier also 9 to 12:30 most of the people they will access the traffic and 12:30 to 2 o'clock lunch time once again 2 to 6 o'clock they will access once again they will work on so back end some of the ip packets will be generated so now what these networking tools will do or adr tool will do so after observing the traffic it will form a baseline whenever this baseline is crossing okay especially for flooding category of the attacks we discussed it correct so these tool will suspect as a some of the malicious activities going on in the network automatically alert will be generated okay so how we can define once we are deploying edr tool in the organization it can form a baseline after observing the traffic and whenever this baseline is crossing automatically alerts will be generated i will give a couple of example give me one second okay so that is called baseline method example so in our below 10th class so our baseline score is 35 marks passing score is 35 our m set may be qualifying marks is 40 marks okay our cat okay common administrative test so that example score is 60% so in such a way, some qualify marking will be there, right? So that is called baseline. So here also, after observing the traffic, it can identify what are peaks of the traffic is coming. It can suspect maybe some of the illegal activities going to happen, some of the abnormal activities coming, then alerts will be generated. Once alert will be generated, then our security analyst will go and we'll see whether it is legitimate activity or illegitimate activity. Something is got compromised like a true positive or not compromised by like a pulse positive. Then we have to go on to, we have to do the investigation. That is called baseline method. Okay. So next one is hash value method. So hash value method when we will use. Okay. So after identifying the malware infection, we have to block. So those files in our EDR tool, not those files, basically those hash values we have to block. So how we can do example, maybe I told you already this one, virustotal.com. So it's one of the open source website. So spelling wrong. Okay, maybe one of the endpoint is downloaded. Nothing but one of the endpoint when I say employee is downloaded one of the malware category of the file. Okay, that file has some of the infection. How can you confirm that file has infection is there or not? You have to do the investigation, correct? So come here and upload those files. I already shown this one to you previously. So example, maybe I will take some of the um, file. So I uploaded one of the file and I'm giving confirm upload. Maybe this file is downloaded in the end user machine and this file we have to upload and we have to see whether this file has any infection or not. After completing the, okay, so infection, maybe this file has some infection is there. Some malware infection is there. If malware infection is there, first thing what we will do, we'll do containment. Nothing but network isolation we will do. Second thing what we will do, so we'll take care of the clean deleting of those files. First thing is we'll do network containment. When you say network containment, network isolation. Second thing, what we can do, we can take care of the deleting of those files. In case if it is malware infection is there, maybe two by 61, three by 61, four by 61 and so on. It is coming. All these are vendors. Vendors will validate based on the signature, based on the heuristic. Is there any infection is there? So. Now that file, whatever uploaded, VPN draw, VPN draw to draw dot IO. 
this file has infection. Now in my machine, we have to delete this file and I have to run the antivirus scans and also I have to block hash value. In future, similar type of file is downloading by any other user, it has to block it automatically. So how we can do this, that one? Give me one second. Okay, so yeah, what I'm saying here, once that file has any infection, so as I said, we have to clean up the file, not clean up, we have to delete the file. After deleting the file, we have to block the hash value. So where can we see hash value? Click on details tab. And there are three different types of hash values. This already we discussed a part of rainbow table attack. Rainbow table attack we already discussed. For every password, whenever it is storing in the Okay, organization are in the database. It will not store in the direct password in the form of plain text. It will store in the form of hash value. Every file has to have the hash value. I told you already. So in this scenario, MD5 and SHA1 you can ignore always because it's weak ciphers. You can take this hash value and you can go to the EDR tool and you can block. If you are blocking this hash value in future, any other person is downloading VPN draw.io. So it will block it automatically. Why? Because in the EDR tool already this hash value, we blocked it. It will match that pattern. It will match that signature. It will not. Okay. So once again, systems will not get compromised. Okay. So that is about hash value method. Okay. So we have to take the files, whatever infection has come, and we have to take those files. And we have to upload those files in the virustotal.com or sandboxing environment. We have to analyze the files. Look, after analyzing the file, in case if that file has any infection, so then we have to delete those files and also we have to block the hash value. In future, it should not repeat once again. Okay. So, what is the hash value method now? RK, I have a doubt. Yes, please. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. You are doing this uh, hash value manually, right? The verification of the file. Don't we have any automatic once a end user downloads a file, it gets all automatically checked with the hash value. We have to do it manually. No signature will be there already. If signature will be there, hash value will be there. If unknown hmm. file is coming in that scenario, hash hash will not be there. Okay. See if new attacks are see if known attack is coming automatically, it will verify with the signature of the hash value and it will block it. But what about new attack is coming and it is not existing in the our EDR signature or vendor database. In that scenario, we cannot identify. And also these EDR tools also will not be regularly updated, EDR tools. Maybe R&D team of the respective tool, whatever we purchased, maybe it will take some time to update. So that's why we have to analyze all this in the sandboxing environment or in the public websites. But if there are more than one lakh users, everybody downloading lakhs of files, we can't do every file scanning, right? No, we can take the file hash value and we can go and we can verify. Okay. Yeah, we can take the hash value of the file. So here hash value of the file option is also available. Okay, this is most of the cases, no unknown attack has come to the automation and it doesn't have the value. So this is not only just unknown attack. One more thing I want to say, so this is basically for the verification investigation also. We need evidence, right? Whether really that file has the malware. Maybe a couple of times EDR tools will give the false positives, false positive alert notification. So this file has this some of the malware. But when you are coming here and when you are verifying, so it will not show any malware infection. So if you want to confirm that file has the malware infection or not that is our duty basically that is our role and responsibility so in that scenario we have to verify these investigation steps okay there, there are two things here one is false positive one is true positive 
so pulse pass to time also so when the tool is alerting we should have the evidence so example one of the criminal criminal cases happened without any evidence whether court will accept it no same thing is applicable after doing the instant investigation we have to do the forensic analysis so how you have done the forensic analysis do you have any evidence is there or not so in case that evidence is not there obviously our client also will not accept where is the evidence for this particular incident so to show that the evidence we have to do all these analysis not in just for to show the client or maybe satisfying the client so whether everything we are following the process or not whether real infection is there or not maybe that is false positive but some infection is there then our systems will get compromised okay so that's why we have to do all these analysis okay so in the hash value method after identifying the hash value so we have to go and we have to go to the administration setting hash value method blocking will not be there for every maybe person in the team especially l1 team and l2 team doesn't have the access to blocking the hash value only l3 team couple of formation even l2 also if it is a product based company most of the people has the admin access if it is service based is companies like mindtree or emphasis or maybe capgemini or tcs synthesis wipro all these companies so they will not give access to your administration part they will give only whatever is required for l1 whatever is required for l2 whatever is required for l3 okay so in that scenario you cannot not even block hash also but i am giving the generic trick okay and we have to click on the hash value method and we have to block the hash value so that it will not repeat once again whenever any other is trying to download the same type of the file because already we blocked the hash value okay so this analysis we you see one more thing is i want to clarify one more thing here couple of printers they will ask why you are uploading the files in the virustotal.com this is a public website why maybe in case this file in this in this scenario itself we can take i uploaded vpn dot draw dot io it's one of the file from my computer my laptop okay maybe this file has since to data is there now this file is sitting in the virustotal.com maybe attacker is compromising the virustotal.com or maybe whoever is managing the virustotal.com they can see my data of the file whatever i uploaded why are uploading the files in the public data or public websites to eliminate that drawback we have sandboxing environment sandboxing environment will be there in our on premise location that may be either physical server or maybe virtual machine as well i am repeating once again example one of the file test.dll file one of the user is downloaded that file example for bahubali movie okay that file once he downloaded by the end user maybe that file has some of the malware but you want to verify whether really that file has the malware or not then what you will do you will come to virustotal.com and you will upload the test.dll bahubali movie file so maybe that bahubali dot i mean test.dll file maybe some confidential movie is fine well and good but in that file has some confidential data is there in that scenario it is sitting in the virustotal.com whoever is r and d team of virustotal.com they are managing the website they can see your confidential data okay to eliminate those drawbacks whenever any sensitive or confidential data of the files you are uploading in the virustotal.com then we have to use on premise solution is called sandboxing environment so that is our next method you can see next method is sandboxing environment okay first you can say in the virus nowadays edr is giving one more good idea one is one more good feature basically once the user is downloading the file directly it giving the hash value also we no need to upload the even file also directly take the hash value and come to virusholder.com you can go on search button you can see here url it can identify ip address verification we can do domain verification we can do file hash verification also we can do 
So as I said, once the user is downloading any file nowadays, EDR tools has a capability of so giving the hash value also. Instead of uploading the file, now directly I can take the hash value from the EDR tool or antivirus tool. Then I can paste the antivirus. I mean, sorry, I can paste the hash value here. Then directly I can give search. That's all. Now it will go and it will identify whether that file has any infection or not. That one, all, that one also we can do. So that is the beauty of EDR tool. But the antivirus tool will not give all these features. That's why now everyone is migrating to traditional antivirus to EDR. Okay, traditional antivirus to next generation antivirus. Okay. So how we can define now this one? After verifying verdict of the file related to malware, we have to take the hash value and how to block in EDR tool. Okay. So that it will not repeat once again for the same file name whenever another user is downloading. So I will give a couple of steps also. How to verify the malware file? How to verify the malware file? Malware file hash value. Malware file hash value using manual process. Go to virustotal.com. Upload the file. Click on search button. Check the reputation. Verify the verdict. Go to details tab. Take the SHA to whatever just now I given or I shown practically, I'm writing in theoretical way. Take to SHA to value, hash value, and go to EDR tool. Block the hash value. So, this is the way how we can use manual process in the virustotal.com. So nowadays, as I said, automated way also there. EDR tool, whenever the user is driver downloads, he is doing, or maybe copying through remote devices, or maybe through phishing email attachments, clicking on. Automatically, EDR tools is giving the file name along with hash value also, even folder of the file also, path of the file where it is located. That information also it will provide. Okay. So how to verify? hash value in the EDR tool. Log into EDR tool. Go to users tab or devices tab. Click on and provide, sorry, provide host name or device name or IP address of the Impacted machine. See the file name, file size, file category, and the hash value of the file. Take the hash value and go to virustotal.com. I will show you practical this one. Don't worry. Second option, EDR tool. Go to virustotal.com. Go to search button, right? Yeah, search button. Go to search button. And paste the hash value. Whatever you have taken and check the verdict or reputation.
then take the hash value come back to edr tool and block the hash value okay this is for using edr tool how to verify the hash value so nowadays edr tool has a capability of giving the hash value of the file also there is no need to upload any files due to security reasons okay if the tool whatever we are using that doesn't showing any hash value method then we have to go for manual process of the whatever steps i provided or maybe we have to use sandboxing environment okay so next one is sandboxing environment so sandboxing environment mean hingi here so instead of going to the public websites and uploading the files and checking the reputation or maybe malware infection or verdict of the files from the different vendors what we have to do so we have to create one of the on premise server in the data center or maybe we have we can create one of the virtual machine using vmware esxi or nsxi or maybe through oracle virtual box and we have to integrate our threat intelligence feeds when you say threat intelligence feeds malware related threat intelligence feeds whatever it is coming regularly in the news and whatever ioc's we are receiving indicator of compromise is indicator of compromise hash values we are receiving all those hash values we have to integrate it to our sandboxing environment of the machine wherever we deploy so then take the file or take the hash value instead of going the public websites go to that server and check the whether that file or maybe hash value has there any infection or not that is called sandboxing environment so we are not uploading anything that sandboxing environment is located in our office location that may be physical server that may be virtual box in couple of interest they will ask okay now you are doing work from home option and that server is located in the okay so your office location may be in the hyderabad or maybe in bangalore how can you go and you can upload the files we can take the remote access we can take the rdp to that server of the sandboxing environment wherever it is located okay you should have the clear cut idea about what is rdp so how we can gather because this question is asked by the one of the interviewer so your physical server of the sandboxing environment is located in the your data center and you are doing work from option due to pandemic corona how can you upload the file in the so respective physical server or virtual environment what the answer we have to give so we have to give rdp server access i will log into the respect to rdp i will take the rdp connection access to that sandboxing environment and i can upload the file and i can analyze the file okay so that the sandboxing environment may be either physical server or maybe either virtual environment also if it is virtual environment directly we can log into our systems by providing the username and password graph through graphical user interface or maybe through command line interface okay it is a testing environment basically it is testing environment we are testing the malware infection it is a testing environment of malware and it has to deploy either in the physical server or virtual box deploy using either deploy using either in the physical server or virtual box whenever any alert will come we have to take the file and verify the malware infection using sandbox environment there is no need to update the files in public websites like virustotal.com or hybridanalysis.com so hybridanalysis.com also another website so i'll open that one also
So, but it will ask sometimes your email address. That is the problem here with uh, hybridanalysis.com. After uploading the files, it will ask your email address. You can see here file URL. So it we can uh, validate file as, as well as URL also. File collection, report search, IP domain or hash value. You can see IP or domain or hash. Yara search, Yara is a one of the malware category of the file string search. There are multiple options here. So file means here, drag, drag click on this one and upload the file here. Okay, and analyze, click on we have to analyze. It will ask email address. So that's why most of the people will not prefer hybrid analysis. Why? Because it will ask always our email address, personal email address. Okay, so that is about, these are the detection methods. So after policies are configured, these policies, okay, so now backend detection methods, we no need to enable all these methods basically. By default, vendor will provide all these methods. According to these methods, so either it will detect or either it will alert or either it will block or either it will quarantine. So those are detection methods. Now, in the deployment side, we have to discuss about a couple of things. Antivirus agent status. Okay, this antivirus we are installing. Do you think that always antivirus agent is up and running and it's active state? No. Couple of times it is like unknown status. Same time, maybe malware is downloading by end user, then our system will get compromised. Couple of times antivirus agent is sleep state. It will sleep. Why? Because couple of employees, they will not shut down the system. They will put always in sleep mode. Okay. They'll put always in the sleep mode. You are putting in the sleep mode so that the antivirus agent will not reboot and new features also will not update. So what the antivirus agent status? Antivirus EDR agent status. Yes. So in the demo, we can discuss what are theoretical we are discussing. If you are clear about theoretical, we can show I can show you practical session, maybe Monday or maybe Tuesday. Okay, antivirus ADR agent status. First one is active. Second one is inactive. Third one is unknown. Fourth one is sleeping. So these are the status of the act, uh, antivirus agent. What are the agent we are deploying in the so respective end user machines? So active means it's up and running. No problem. Inactive meaning here, maybe antivirus, um, maybe it is sleeping or maybe it doesn't have, maybe software issues are there and so on. It is not in active state. Due to antivirus agent is not updated to latest version. Always this antivirus agents also we have to upgrade. Okay, it is not a fixed state. Due to antivirus agent is not updated to latest version. Okay, unknown. So agent itself has some issue. Is agent or piece of software of antivirus has issue sleeping. So due to employee ignorance, Couple of times, antivirus agent will sleep because systems will not be shut down. But don't say ignorance. It's we should not use other people. We should not blame other people. Couple of times, and okay, we'll, we'll put couple of times. Couple of times, antivirus agent will sleep because system will not be shut down. So these are all the possible reasons for the why the antivirus agent is in the so active state or inactive state or unknown state or sleeping state. This is also called as a health checkup. Okay, this is also called as a health checkup status. So first, first role, role and responsibility. Give me one second. So roles and responsibilities. So go to EDR tool. 
so this is x i have x years of experience in endpoint security protection or endpoint security solution currently i am working in so and so company i am working as endpoint security design implementation operational support guy or analyst in my organization we have more than 20000 endpoints are there or machines are there so those includes example laptop or macbook or workstation desktop and so on for all those servers we deployed antivirus or edr agent and we are and that agent is com continuously communicating to okay edr server or tool okay whenever any abnormal or malicious activity is happening through files or scripts maybe phishing email attachments or maybe through drive by downloads so this agent will communicate and alerts will be generated in the edr tool okay coming to my roles and response this is design and implementation level i provided roles and responsibilities in uh, it's not yet completed i will write here coming to my roles and responsibilities so first step i will take care of the health check up of all the end user machines and the status of edr agent so what is your role in the endpoint security point of view first thing what you will do maybe your shift is starting at 9 o'clock and your shifting is ending at 6 o'clock what the first step you will do you will check the status of the agent if status of the agent is like unknown or inactive that systems will get compromised so that's why always as a endpoint security guy what you have to do you have to go and you have to check the dashboard in the dashboard any of the computer or laptop or macbook or workstation agent status is showing like unknown or inactive or sleeping active is means well and good no problem it's like a green color inactive or sleeping or maybe unknown status then we have to troubleshoot why it is unknown status why we it is sleeping status why it is inactive status we have to wake up the agent couple of times this agent will be sleep then we have to click right click and wake up agent that's all we will restart the agent once again and it will come back to the active state otherwise we have to uninstall the antivirus agent software we have to reinstall once again that is the first step it's not completed yet i will write even other uh, roles and responsibilities what we have to do up to six points is completely how much experience we have which company you are working on what is the design what the implementation how the alerts will be generated so from seventh step onwards roles and responsibilities okay so coming back here so these are all the status now actions of the alert notifications so whenever we are receiving the alert notification what is the status of the each and every alert one is blocked i think what malware infection is there and tool is blocked automatically second one clean second one clean means there is no that file doesn't have any malware file does not have any malware next one quarantine so we are suspecting that file maybe has a malware example home quarantine in corona time we have seen so why they have done home quarantine because it will spread to other people as well same concept is applicable we are suspecting whatever file is downloaded by end user maybe has malware infection but here we have to go and we have to verify the verdict of the file reputation of the file also so here edr tool will suspect file has malware infection even for quarantine files also we have to go and we have to do the investigation next one alert so alert will come by using edr tool we have to go and we have to see whether it is a legitimate or a legitimate false positive or true positive something got compromised or not compromised have to go and verify whether the file has malware infection or not if malware infection is there 
it is like a something got compromised it's a true positive if malware infection is not there false positive okay so that is about alert related part so these are all the different types of actions of the notifications whatever we are receiving related to so using edr tool related incidents here i put instant notification not alert incident uh, next one we have so dashboard it will provide the summary of the overall things overall how many incidents we have it will provide the thick, uh, security posture of the organization. Okay. It can provide the how many are critical, how many are low, how many are high. Okay. Those information will be provided by. So, respect to dashboard of every tool has the dashboard basically. Every, not only just our antivirus or firewall or SIM tool and so on. Every tool has dashboard. Dashboard can be represented or dashboard can provide the information related to. What is the security posture of the organization? How many incidents we are receiving? Out of incidents, whatever we received, how many are critical? How many are high? How many are medium? How many are low? And so on. Those information will be provided by our ADR tool. Okay. Uh, next one we have how to integrate EDR logs to SIM tool. So there are a couple of methods, this entire question, guys, because our main tool is SIM tool. Okay, how to integrate EDR logs to SIM tool? Because our focus is SOC operations. Using syslog server method, using API token management method. So syslog is a traditional. API token is a SAS based, this is applicable for SAS based. It's like on premise, on premise EDR tool, nothing but it's a physical server related. This is SAS based. SAS, SAS based is nothing but software as a service. This we can discuss in future, don't worry. All these are new concepts to you. Syslog or API token management method we will use to integrate the logs to SIM tool. Okay. Uh, then who are all vendors or tools are available in the market? Vendors, okay. Pri before going to the vendors or tools, then I can discuss about difference between antivirus and EDR. Differences between antivirus and EDR. Inter question this one, very, very important. They will ask what is EDR? Okay. So antivirus here, this EDR. This EDR also called as endpoint detection and response. This is also called as next generation antivirus. When you say next generation, always advanced features will be there. That's called next generation. Okay. So antivirus, it has a limited capabilities. are features it has advanced features advanced are more features okay so next one it will use only signature based detection method baseline method Hash value method. To receive the alert notification. To receive the incidents or alert notifications. It will use signature based machine learning and artificial intelligence. 
behavioral based or baseline heuristic already we dis discussed all these next one hash value and sandboxing environment also antivirus will support features like threat prevention malware prevention and antivirus prevention that's all about antivirus but here edr tool will support threat prevention hds hps malware prevention file integrity monitoring dlp next one app control web control antivirus prevention virus prevention okay and so on so it has advanced features so that is the main difference between antivirus and edr guys so that's why edr has advanced features and you can see here main two these two are main differences it has only signature based and it will not support any machine learning capability okay so even it can identify the unknown attacks also because nowadays as i said so many attacks are unknown to us so that is about main differences between antivirus and edr coming back what are the tools are available or vendors are available tools are vendors so right now number one in the market as per gartner report so it is edr sorry cloud strike next one is microsoft defender Uh, next one we have sophos next one we have carbon block even the carbon block as per gartner report it is showing in the quadrant the three okay i will show what is mean by gartner report i'll explain give me some time carbon block next one we have cisco amp next one we have silence resolution one security so coming back all these are like advanced one edr tools uh, we have couple of traditional also what are those traditional one semantic trend micro e set mcafe kaspersky anti -mal malware bytes so in our personal app test we'll use couple of things like avast norton so so many tools are more than 50 tools are available you should not be expert in all those tools if you know one tool more than sufficient but you should know what are we are discussing all these things with practical way or you have to think logical way how this edr tool will work and so on investigation nothing just we have to go and we have to take the files and we have to check the infection whether clean or not and we have to close the incident one day or two days you are doing the investigation that is more than sufficient but these basics are very very important wherever you will go water position you are yesterday i attended one of the ciso interview so in that one also they are asking about what is threat modeling what is wasp top 10 what is difference between encryption and hashing these are all basics why ciso is required all these basics okay because basics are always basic it's very important whether you have strong okay foundation is there or not and all the concepts are not okay yeah so if you know one tool that is more than sufficient as i said gartner report what do you mean gartner report so so many tools are there i provide only couple of tools here so example you can go and you can see edr gartner report 
Gartner is an organization or website. They will conduct survey quarterly once, and they will identify who is the best, okay, tool in the market. There are four, four layers will be not layers, four quadrants will be there. Okay, one is later quadrant, second one is uh, challenger quadrant, niche player, visionary. So these are all the different types of quadrants. So you can see here now. Yeah, Microsoft CrowdStrike Trend Micro Sentinel one. I forgot Sentinel one. So Sentinel one also one of the famous tool. Yeah, Microsoft CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is number one right now. After that, Microsoft Defender, Trend Micro, Sentinel one, Mac Office, Sophos. All these are in the later quadrant. This is called Got Gartner Quadrant Report. So as I said, quarterly ones, this Gartner is a company. It is located in Bangalore also. So a couple of times they will uh, release the job opportunities also. This R&D department, basically. it's They are maintaining this website. Okay. Now, what this Gartner will do? Quarterly ones, they will conduct some survey. With whom they will conduct survey? All the customers. They will go to TCS. What is the best tool as per your opinion? They will go to Wipro. What is the best tool as per your opinion? They will go to Infosys and they will ask what is the best tool as per your opinion. So finally, they will make a summary. So whenever you were, uh, I mean, whenever any elections completed, they will take some survey, right? So Lagada Party Rajgopal survey, NDTV uh, election survey, uh, the Times of India, the Hindu, in such a way, they will conduct some survey, polling basically. So here also same thing. They will conduct survey and according to the people opinion, customers opinion, finally they will make which one is the best tool in the market. That is called Gartner report. So later, later is first quadrant because it, this one we can represent four quadrants. First quadrant is later quadrant, second quadrant challenger, third one is niche players. Yeah, niche players, fourth one is visionaries. Okay. So these are the four quadrants. Most of the organization, most of the organizations they will purchase whatever tool is available in the leader position. Obviously, based on the opinion of the different people or customers. Okay, so they're making a summary and most of the people, they will purchase these tools only. Okay. So in the challenger position, you can see ESET. And FireEye also there. I did not give FireEye, Bitdefender, F-Secure, BlackBerry, Portinet, Panda, Checkpoint, Cash Press Case, Cyber Reason. Broadcam, Cisco, VMware. Carbon block is echoed by VMware. Okay. Cisco AMP. Carbon block and Cisco AMP, even though it is showing in the visionary phase or visionary related quadrant, but they have a lot of full capabilities. Couple of times we should not trust this particular Gartner report as well. Okay. So this is applicable to not only antivirus or area tool, this is applicable to firewall also. Firewall Gartner report also there. Okay. So whenever, if you want to purchase any tool, obviously we have to go with this particular report and we have to suggest to customer. That one will be taken care by solution architect. Whatever we are discussing, this is nothing but solution architect, not our role. More than security architect. Okay. So that's all about tools. In our class, I will show you so for CDR. So most probably I will show you tomorrow. So Sophos CDR tool, you can see Sophos also there in the Gartner quadrant. It is in the later position. So if you know one tool, that's more than sufficient. But you should understand the logic. Sophos CDR also called Gartner quadrant. Okay. Yeah, so that's all for today. So evening class, what I will do, I will explain about uh, dashboards, theoretical part and alerts. Then we can go and we can discuss with the DLP. See, already inbuilt features are there. Okay, now I will ask a couple of questions, whether you are understanding the concept or not. I will pinpoint a couple of people. Please don't mind. Even if you'll scold me, that's fine. No, not a... I mean, I, I, I don't mind. 
Akil, are you there? Akil? Yeah, yes, sir. Akil, so what is the DLP licensing option? Okay, DLP. dedicatedly, yeah. So dedicatedly, instead of, okay, what are EDR tool is, EDR tool is supporting DLP, you know already. Yes, but I don't want the EDR tool because it is providing basic functionality only, basic features only, but okay. I want to purchase a dedicated DLP tool. So what is the licensing option for DLP? Licensing option. What is the licensing option for DLP tool? Okay, uh, next one, Baji. That's fine, uh, Nakil. That's fine. I'll clarify. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sudha? Based on, oh, yeah, based Sudha, on please. total number of endpoints, sir. Perfect. Excellent answer. Based on total number of endpoints, DLP normally will be configured. DLP solution, as I said, all the endpoint solutions will work on the same concept. So even for DLP solution also, we'll implement the same process. This is not only applicable to antivirus and EDR. This is applicable to, okay, so antivirus EDR, this is applicable to DLP, this is applicable to encryption, this is applicable to host IDS, host IPS, file integrity monitoring also. Okay, yeah, I will ask one more question now. Bavita, Bavita, are you there? Yes, sir. What is the deployment option of DLP? Deployment. How can we deploy a DLP solution? Just now explained. Mm. Mm. Okay, I will clarify. No, no, no problem. Okay, sir. Peter. Peter, are you there? Yeah, yeah, what is the DLP deployment? It is showing clearly here also. You can see design or implementation or deployment, client and server based approach. As I said, all these solutions will work on the same concept, but policies are different. That's all. Only these policies are different. Okay, but design, implementation, everything is same as it is. Okay, so what is the design and implementation or deployment I provided for antivirus and EDR? It's a client and server for DLP also same as it is because all the endpoints were working on same concept. So client and server meaning here, a DLP agent we have to install here. Okay, so this DLP agent will communicate it to DLP tool here instead of antivirus CDR, DLP tool. Whenever any data is leaking through pen drives or maybe through personal email to professional email ID, or maybe through social networking websites, or maybe through cloud deployments, DLP agent will communicate to DLP server, alerts will be generated. Okay, so not only this DLP, even if you are going for HADS, HAPS also, what is the licensing option? Licensing option based on number of endpoints. What is the design and implementation? Client and server based approach. And what is file integrity monitoring of the Licensing option, same. So based on how many number of endpoints are there and what the design and implementation based on the client and server based approach. Nothing but file integrity monitoring agent we have to install here. This agent will communicate to file integrity monitoring tool. So whenever the files adding or uploading or downloading or maybe deleting or modifying, okay, this file integrity monitoring agent will communicate it to this file integrity monitoring tool. Once alerts will be received, then we have to go and we have to do the investigation. So same concept for every tool or every solution that may be licensing, 
that may be design or implementation only difference is policies configuration dlp policies are different fire integrity monitoring policies are different okay hds hps policies are different encryption policies are different remaining even this is also applicable signature based and machine learning okay anyway we can discuss evening also don't worry so i will go with the dlp i'll go with hds hps file integrity monitoring and encryption so today evening we will complete remaining four once we will complete these four then we can discuss maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow tool practical tool then you will get a clear cut idea so if you want to get the clear cut idea about tool then you should aware of all this theoretical part first okay so tcs is recruiting dedicated to on the defender but a lot of vacancies are there in cloud stack as well okay so so right now cloud stack is number one most of the organization they are purchasing this one after that defender after that sophos carbon block sentinel one yeah cisco amp so these are all the leading tools in the market so as i said earlier you should not be expert in all these tools if you want to become all these tools expert then you will get retirement as well it's not like okay every tool you become should be expert what is the back end concept and how tool is working that is very important so example if i want to give generic example gmail or yahoo mail or outlook or maybe hotmail why we are using all these emails to send the email and to receive the email maybe console wise it is different composing wise providing to subject line putting cc or bcc drafting an email it's a common for every email it's a common for gmail it's a common for yahoo mail it's common for outlook it's a common for hotmail as well so what is the fundamental here so to send an email to receive an email we will use all these servers so graphical user interface only will be different maybe yahoo mail has a different console gmail has a different console outlook has a different console but back end concept is same as it is to send and to draft an email okay if you know one tool that is more than sufficient you can go and attend for any of the antivirus tool interviews maybe example i am giving so for cdr interview sorry so for cdr tool i am explaining the class that doesn't mean that you cannot apply for crowd strike vacancies that doesn't mean that you should not apply microsoft defender vacancies okay whatever i am explaining so first you should be aware of those things you have to map to these tools that's all this is not only applicable to edr tool this is applicable to even firewalls proxy ids ips okay next one is the sim tool as well okay if you want to expert in all these tools we have more than 1000 tools are there as i said so even you will get retirement also you will not become expert in all these tools okay so what you learned from this one you should learn about all these basics are very important all these concepts are important these concepts we have to apply in all those tools maybe graphical user interface may be different okay so that's all for today morning so 10 o'clock 11 o'clock we have interviews are there right so whether everybody got the email whether everybody got the email or not today how many people are attending hello say at least yes or no that's fine for tomorrow you will be sending it today only so kranti for tomorrow what about today four or five people are given the names that's why i'm asking yeah, i'm i'm attending today so peter is today any other anyone else Okay, Peter. I will call you around eleven o'clock. Be ready. My slot is eleven. I'm sorry. My slot is eleven at twelve o'clock. Two o'clock. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Okay, that's fine. Twelve o'clock. I will call you. Yes. Any other people today? Only one out of twenty-five, twenty-four. okay i am saying once again these mark interviews just for to test your knowledge how much you are grasping 
whether you are understanding or not okay no institution okay so are providing this mock interviews at all please try to understand these interviews are really helpful because practical i will ask all those questions whatever they are asking in the real interviews not only myself total around 10 members team is there so everybody will take the interviews so i will go and i will check so ganesh has sent to everybody all these emails right i will verify those emails and i will call you back around from 11 to 1 o'clock okay please ready for that one so we will continue tomorrow sorry today evening at 7 o'clock or maybe 6:30 okay today evening we can complete dlp encryption file integrity monitoring hds hps possible tomorrow itself i will show you demo let's see okay so that's all for today morning guys have a nice day thank you sir thank you